Hello coders and welcome to another How to Code Well PHP tutorial. Today we're going to be taking a look at the array underscore fill function in PHP. Now this will fill a PHP array based on the values that you supply as well as a starting index. So let's take a look at the code. Let's dive in. So the first thing I'm going to do is create a variable called data. This is going to hold the array and we're going to do data is equal to and then array underscore fill. Now before I fill this out I'm going to take a look at the documentation and we can see up here that it fills an array with values. You can see the link to the documentation to find out some more information. The first parameter is the start underscore index, the first index of the returned array. It supports non-negative indexes only. The second argument is the num. This is an integer. It is the number of elements to insert. And then finally, the third parameter is the value. This is the value used for filling. So this is how you create an array using the array underscore fill function. So let's go into the code and actually start using this. Let's say, for example, we want to create a data set that starts with the index of one. So let's put in one like so. We want to create a data set of, say, 10 items. So let's put in 10 here. And finally, we need to supply the value that we want to put into this array. So let's put in the value of books as a string like so. Now, what this is going to do is it's going to create an array with a starting index of one. We're going to have 10 elements in this array, and each of these elements is going to have the value of books. So let's go and print this out. I'm going to type print pre and then I'm going to have print underscore R and then supply data like so. And here we can see that we have an array of 10 elements starting from the index of one and each value contains books. Let's go and play around with the start index. So let's go back to the code. Let's copy line two and let's paste that under the print R. Let's change the variable here to say products and let's change the start index of five and the number is going to be four. Let's change the value of books to product. Again, let's copy line three and four and paste it down here so we can change the data variable to products. Let's go back to the browser and take a look at this example. In this example, what I've done is I've changed the start index to five and I've requested that four items are to be created in this array. So we have one, two, three, and four. Each of these elements within this filled array will have the value of product. But what happens if we supply a negative number to the start index? Well, if that happens, then the preceding index will start from zero. Let's go back into the code so I can demonstrate this example. Line six to eight and paste it underneath. Let's change the start index to minus two. Let's keep the number to four and let's change the word product to be cars. Now let's change this variable from product to cars and of course change the variable in the printr statement on line 12. Before I have a look at the output in the browser, let's just discuss what I've done here. So I've changed the start index from five, which is obviously a positive number, to a negative number of minus two. Now we're still requesting that four items are to be created or filled within this array, but we're starting from minus two. So the next preceding item will have an index of zero and not minus one. This is just the way the array underscore fill function works. So let's go into the browser and take a look. Let's scroll down to see our third example. Here we can see that this starts with the index of minus two. This is the start index that we supplied to the array underscore fill function call. But 
you may have expected that the next element has an index of minus one and then zero. In fact, the next element has an index of zero and not minus one. So don't let this catch you out if you need negative indexes within your application. As with all of the tutorials in this course, the code is available in the link in the show notes below. Thank you ever so much for watching. Happy coding, everyone. I'll see you again soon. Cheers. Bye.